Hey everyone, welcome back to our SAPS 4HANA training series. Today, we are talking about one of the most powerful tools in materials management module, which is Material Requirements Planning or in short, we call MRP. Ever wondered how businesses make sure they have just the right amount of materials for production or sales? Not too much? Not too little? That's where MRP comes in. In this session, I'll explain MRP in the simplest way possible with a real world scenario so you can truly understand how it works. And at the end, I'll show you how to run an MRP process inside SAP. So, let's get started. First, let us start with the basics. What is MRP? MRP is a planning tool in SAP that helps businesses ensure they have enough materials to meet demand whether for production or customer sales. It checks stock levels in the system. It calculates how much more is needed to fulfill production or sales. It creates proposals for either buying materials or producing items in-house. Why is MRP important? Imagine you're running a bakery. You need ingredients like flour, sugar, and eggs to make cakes. If you run out of flour in the middle of the day, your production stops and you lose sales. MRP prevents this from happening by ensuring you always have enough ingredients before you run out. Let me give you an example to understand better. Imagine we work at ABC Tools Limited, a company that manufactures drill machines. We need three types of materials. Trading goods, pre-assembled drill machines bought from suppliers. Raw materials, steel sheets used to make the drills. Finished goods, drill machines produced in-house. We just got an order to produce 500 drill machines next month. But before we can start production, we need to check if we have enough materials. Now how MRP works here? SAP first check stock levels to see how much is already available in our warehouse. Here is what we find. Steel sheets, 600 in stock, but we need 1000. Motor units, 400 in stock, but we need 500. Since we don't have enough materials, MRP will automatically generate procurement proposals. So, if we need to buy from suppliers, MRP creates a purchase requisition. If we need to produce the item in-house, MRP creates a planned order. SAP now suggests two actions. Purchase requisition for 400 steel sheets to be bought externally. Purchase requisition for 100 motor units to be bought externally. Planned order to produce 500 drill machines in-house. Now, the procurement team can convert the purchase requisition into a purchase order and send it to suppliers. Why the production team can convert the planned order into a production order to begin manufacturing. By running MRP, we ensured that all materials arrived on time, production ran without delays, and customer orders were fulfilled successfully. Now you know what is MRP and how it works, right? Now let us understand the step-by-step -step of MRP planning process. The MRP, Material Requirements Planning, process is an essential component of production and inventory management in SAP, designed to ensure that the right materials are available at the right time, in the right quantities, to meet production demands. Here is a step-by-step -step breakdown of how the MRP planning process works. Define an input demand. MRP starts by identifying the demand for materials, which can come from different sources such as sales orders, real customer orders that need to be fulfilled, planned independent requirements, internal forecasts or plans that estimate material requirements based on historical data or anticipated production. This demand is gathered by the system as part of demand management and forms the foundation for the MRP run. Next, check the planning file. Before running MRP, 
SAP checks the planning file to identify which materials need planning and which don't. The planning file keeps track of materials that require MRP based on open purchase orders, open production orders, stock levels and safety stock requirements, reorder points. Next, net requirements calculation. Once the planning file is updated, SAP performs a net requirements calculation which compares the available inventory and supply with the demand for materials. Key components of this calculation include current stock, the material currently available in the warehouse, scheduled receipts, quantities that are expected to arrive, example, from suppliers or internal production, gross requirements, the total amount of materials needed for production or sales. The net requirements are calculated by subtracting the available stock from the gross requirements. If the result is positive, meaning there is a shortage, SAP determines how much material needs to be ordered or produced. Next, create procurement or production proposals. Based on the net requirements calculation, SAP generates procurement proposals or production proposals. These proposals determine how to fulfill the material requirements. External procurement Purchase requisitions for materials that need to be purchased from external vendors. SAP creates purchase requisitions. These PRs can later be converted into purchase orders. Internal production planned orders for materials that need to be produced internally. SAP generates planned orders. These planned orders are later converted into production orders once the production team is ready to begin manufacturing. Next, SAP calculates the lead times and basic dates for the procurement or production process to ensure that materials are available on time. Key points during this stage include Lead time calculation. This is the time it takes to procure or produce materials. Lead time for external procurement considers supplier delivery times, while lead time for internal production considers production and setup times. Scheduling SAP uses the calculated lead times to generate scheduled dates for when materials should be ordered or produced. This ensures that the materials will arrive just in time for production to start. Next, SAP determines the source of supply for the materials. For externally procured materials, SAP identifies potential vendors and generates purchase orders. For internally produced materials, SAP ensures that the production department can handle the required production capacity and the work centers are scheduled. Bomb explosion and dependent requirements determination. For materials that are produced in-house, SAP performs a bomb, bill of materials, explosion to identify the dependent requirements. This step determines the quantities of raw materials or components required to produce an assembly or finished product. Dependent requirements. These are materials needed for the production of another material. Example, components required to make a finished product. SAP calculates these based on the bomb structure. Step 8. We have procurement and production process execution. Once SAP has generated procurement proposals, purchase requisitions, and production proposals, planned orders, the following steps occur. Procurement process. The procurement team reviews and converts the purchase requisitions into purchase orders. The POS are sent to suppliers and the procurement team manages the delivery. Production process. The production team reviews and converts the planned orders into production orders to begin manufacturing the materials. Monitoring and adjustments. After procurement orders and production orders are created, the system continues to monitor the progress of the procurement and production activities. Goods received. GR, when materials are received from suppliers, the goods received is registered in SAP. Production execution. The production department begins manufacturing and production orders are tracked in SAP until completion. If there are any delays or discrepancies, SAP alerts the relevant teams, allowing them to take corrective actions. Let's take a look at how MRP, 
material requirements planning works in SAP with a simple example. Imagine we're managing production for a company that manufactures drill machines. Today, we've received a new customer order. 500 drill machines need to be delivered. But before we start production, we need to check whether we have enough raw materials available. SAP first checks our stock levels to see how much is already available in the warehouse. Here's what we find. Steel sheets, 600 in stock, but we need 1000. Motor units, 400 in stock, but we need 500. We don't have enough materials to meet the demand, which means we need to procure the missing quantities before production can begin. This is where MRP comes into action. SAP will automatically analyze the shortage and generate procurement proposals. Let's see what it suggests. Steel sheets, short by 400. SAP creates a purchase requisition to buy them from a supplier. Motor units, short by 100. Another purchase requisition is created. Drill machines, since these are produced in-house. SAP creates a planned order for 500 machines. MRP does all this instantly, ensuring that procurement and production teams know exactly what to do next. Now that SAP has generated the procurement proposals, the purchase requisitions are converted into purchase orders and sent to suppliers. Meanwhile, the production team converts the planned order into a production order, so manufacturing can begin. This means raw materials are on their way and production is set to run smoothly without any delays. As soon as the raw materials arrive, SAP records a goods receipt, GR, updating the inventory in real time. Now, production can continue without interruption. And here we have it. The drill machines are fully manufactured and ready for shipping. The order is packed and delivered to the customer on time and without any issues. So, what did we achieve with MRP? Let's summarize the key steps. Step 1. Check stock levels. Step 2. Identify material shortages. Step 3. Generate procurement and production proposals. Step 4. Execute procurement and production. Step 5. Receive materials and complete production. By running MRP, we ensured materials were available on time, production ran smoothly, and customer orders were delivered without delays. That's the power of MRP in SAP. With this, we have covered the overview of MRP. So far, we have seen what is MRP and MRP planning process. Now let us understand the types of MRP procedures. Let's dive into the three main types of MRP procedures. MRP MPS and CBP. Each one has a unique approach depending on the type of material and business need. First, we have Material Requirements Planning, MRP. This method is used for both in-house production and external procurement of materials. The system checks available stock and future demand. If materials are needed, MRP generates either a procurement proposal for externally purchased goods or a planned production order for in-house manufacturing. This process helps minimize inventory while ensuring production runs smoothly. Next, we have Master Production Scheduling, MPS. This method focuses on critical resources such as high-demand finished products or key components. Unlike standard MRP, MPS runs separately for critical items to ensure they are always available. If stock drops below a certain level, the system generates production plans to maintain a steady supply. Fin Finally, we have consumption-based planning, CBP. Unlike MRP and MPS, CBP doesn't rely on future demand forecasts. Instead, it uses historical consumption data to determine when to reorder materials. CBP is commonly used for raw materials, spare parts, and operating supplies. 
When stock levels drop below a predefined reorder point, the system automatically triggers a replenishment order. This method is ideal for items with predictable consumption patterns. Now let me give you a consumption-based planning, CBP, with a simple example. Have you ever wondered how businesses manage stock efficiently without overordering or running out? That's where consumption-based planning, CBP, comes in. We'll break it down with a simple example. Managing sugar stock in a cafe. Imagine a small cafe that serves coffee, tea and desserts every day. One of the key ingredients they need is sugar. Since sugar is used consistently, the cafe needs a smart way to manage its stock without running out or overstocking. This is where consumption-based planning helps. Instead of forecasting customer orders, CBP uses past consumption trends to decide when to reorder sugar. Let's say the cafe notices that, on average, it uses 5 kilograms of sugar per day. Knowing this, the cafe owner sets a reorder point, a stock level at which they should place a new order. The cafe supplier takes two days to deliver sugar, so they need to reorder before stock runs out. To ensure they always have enough, they keep a safety stock of 5 kilograms. Now, let's calculate the reorder point. Daily consumption, 5 kilograms. Supplier lead time, 2 days. Safety stock, 5 kilograms. The reorder point is calculated as 10 kilograms. This means, whenever the sugar stock drops to 10 kilograms, the cafe automatically places an order for more sugar. And that's how consumption-based planning, CBP, works. Instead of predicting demand, it relies on past usage to trigger stock replenishment automatically. This same approach is used in businesses worldwide, from manufacturing plants to retail stores. Now that we've covered the three MRP procedures, let's quickly recap. MRP plans materials based on demand and generates procurement production proposals. MPS focuses on critical items and ensures key components are always available. CBP reorders materials based on past consumption, ideal for frequently used supplies. That's all about the MRP, MRP planning and procedures. Now, in our next session, we see the configurations of MRP in SAP.